the bloodline has changed completely. Whereas before it was a group consisting of Roman Reigns, the Usos, and Sol Sokoa, as well as at one time Sami Zayn, with Paul Heyman as the wise man. Now, the picture of the stable is completely altered. Heyman was kicked out on SmackDown, Jimmy Uso was kicked out after WrestleMania, and Jay left the group himself earlier. Roman Reigns is also missing and may never return if Solo Sokoa is to be believed. Meanwhile, Sokoa has brought in the forces of Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and most recently Jacob Fatu, changing the look of the bloodline completely. Now, fans will have to wait and see what's next, but what do we know about the new bloodline? Let's take a look at some of the wildest things about each of the new bloodline members. Before we get into the rest of the video, don't forget to press that like button and make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on. Unlike many other members of the Anawa'i family, Jacob Fatu didn't immediately know that he was going to be a wrestler. In fact, he didn't even consider it as a future for himself. It was made worse because he would end up having a criminal history. At the age of only 18, he was arrested and sentenced to prison for armed robbery. This incident meant that his opportunities would not come quite as easily and forced him to put his wrestling aspirations on hold. As he had just started to think he would become a wrestler. Wrestler. The exact details of his arrest and conviction are not publicly known, but it is known that Fatu's time in prison had a huge impact on his life and his thought process. While he was incarcerated, his cousins Jay and Jimmy Uso appeared on a television, inspiring him to pursue a career in wrestling. Seeing them made him sure that he had to turn his life around. Despite his passion and determination, Fatu's criminal record posed a significant obstacle to entering the wrestling industry. Many promotions and organizations hesitate to sign individuals with a criminal history, especially those involving violent or serious offenses like armed robbery. Fatu's past continued to haunt him even after his release from prison. He faced challenges finding a promotion willing to give him a chance, and his criminal record made it difficult to secure a spot anywhere, but eventually, he got the chance he was looking for, and in MLW in particular, he turned his life around. However, Fatu's ability in the ring, buoyed by his perseverance and dedication, eventually paid off. He was able to overcome his past and secure a spot in the WWE, joining the bloodline alongside his cousin Sol Sokoa, finally arriving in the company. Fatu's story serves as a testament to the power of redemption and second chances, demonstrating that individuals can turn their lives around and achieve their goals with hard work and determination. Sean Ross Sapp spoke about Fatu in WWE, and as it turned out, it was because of his time in prison that he was not hired. The reason he had been kept out is because of a charge that he had years and years and years ago. I think it may have restricted his travel. I don't know if it still does or anything like that. But I mean, listen, the WWE has hired people like this in the past. Look at MVP, look at Booker T. People change, and you know, I'm glad he got signed. It has also been said that he would have been signed way earlier. This is not the first time that Tamatanga has tried to join WWE. The star may now be a part of the bloodline and has been successful, but the last time that he tried, it didn't go as well. He tried out in 2008 and was unable to get a contract, despite his skills and his family legacy being the son of Haku. Haku was one of the fiercest wrestlers to have ever stepped foot inside the ring, and is Tamatanga's adoptive father as well as his uncle. Tamatanga faced stiff competition from other aspiring wrestlers. He failed in the eye of those judging him and ended up without a contract. Since then, he was not able to stand out, but he went on to have a successful career in New Japan Pro Wrestling. While not always the most beloved wrestler, he was one of the most essential names on the Japanese wrestling promotions roster. He ended up forming Gorillas of Destiny with his brother Tonga Loa there. When people think of the Bullet Club, they think of AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, Gallows, and Anderson, and a lot of other stars. However, fans may be surprised to know that Tamatanga is actually a founding member of the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club was established in 2013 and had a significant impact on the wrestling landscape. Tamatanga and his brother, Tonga Loa, were key members of the group. They held the IWGP Tag Team Championships on multiple occasions and were a notable team in the promotion. As a member of the Bullet Club, Tamatanga was involved in several high 
high profile stories. Tonga's involvement with the Bullet Club was a significant aspect of his career. He was a key player in the faction's success and played a role in shaping the direction of the promotion. He, the star has proved himself, despite not appearing as a leading member in this new bloodline with Sol Sokoa and Jacob Fatu taking the lead. Tonga Loa is hated by a portion of the wrestling fandom. His weird style in the ring has not endeared him to crowds despite being capable and a many-time champion with his brother. Tonga Loa's father is Haku as well, and the star is a weird style that many find abhorrent. He was considered to have the worst wrestling sequence of the year in the NJPWG1 a year ago, where he pretended to hit his opponent who was selling each punch and chop as if they were death blows. The fact that it was Kazuchika Okada who was selling the moves made it even weirder, almost making for a Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan moment, only this time, fans really, really want to forget that it ever happened. A lot of fans may not be aware, but Tonga Lo is actually a familiar face in WWE. He was formerly known as Camacho and had a brief stint in WWE from 2009 to 2014. He was initially signed to a developmental contract and assigned to Florida Championship Wrestling, FCW, WWE's developmental territory at the time, and then struggled to establish himself on the main roster. He was not really able to find a foothold. During his time in WWE, Tonga Loa struggled to find his footing and establish a strong character. He was often relegated to lower card matches and pay-per-view pre-shows. Despite his athleticism and potential, he failed to connect with the audience and was eventually released in 2014. However, his experience and exposure during this time likely contributed to his growth and development as a wrestler, which led to his run in NJPW with the Bullet Club, ultimately leading to his successful return to WWE in 2024 as a member of the Bloodline. While Roman Reigns is all about Hollywood now, Solo Sokoa, before really arriving in WWE and making his name, had already acted in a film. He played a small role in a movie called Destroyer. Whether he will find further success in Hollywood remains to be seen, but he started off strong. His notoriety from his time in WWE will only further add to this. While the new Bloodline members may be Tamatanga, Tonga Loa, and Jacob Fatu, there's a real chance that The Rock may be the one behind everything here. Ever since he first returned to WWE earlier in the year, fans thought that The Rock would be trying to take over the leadership of the group. Eventually, he worked with Roman Reigns, but originally they were supposed to face each other. Cody Rhodes became the common enemy in their vision, and they focused all their attention there. Even with that, though, The Rock termed himself the final boss, seeming to put himself over over Roman Reigns. With Reigns gone, there's a theory that it's not Solo Sokoa who's the real leader of the bloodline, but actually none other than the sitting TKO board member, The Rock. There's no confirmation about this yet, but Sokoa may be receiving all his instructions from him. His leadership is what would change everything for the bloodline completely, makes sense, and be his attempt to take complete control. With The Rock pulling the strings, the bloodline would have access to unparalleled resources and expertise, allowing them to outdo their opponents, including including Roman Reigns. And these were the wildest things about the new bloodline. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.